The first thing you need to do straight up is set up a project. You would click on the new project on the right. However, what we'll do is go to an existing project. Open the project overview button and click on project. Now the only thing you really need to enter in this screen is a project name. Everything else is optional. Once you've entered a project name, you can start entering all sorts of information against that project, such as risks and issues and actions. But we'll run through the information on this screen. On the left, we have a box to use MS Project on. This determines whether you will use Soft Project to do your scheduling or use the built-in functionality within Project Administrator to do your scheduling. You also notice on the right there's a box for active. This tells you whether the project appears in lists when you're uh, entering other information or whether it's archived. The next block of information has a status, a project priority and a type. Now all of these values are configurable to suit your organisation. In status we have pending, in progress and postponed. But if you want to change those you can do so through the administration function. The next block of information talks about the people involved, the sponsor, the project manager and the various stakeholders. Below that you have a start date and an estimated completion date. Once the project's completed, you can enter the actual completion date. Below that, we have the financial information. The estimated budget is your first guess at what the project will cost. Your actual budget is the amount of money you actually put into the budget function within Project Administrator. And there's facility to enter the source of funds. Where is the money coming from? The next tab is goals. This is the sort of information that provides the rationale for the project. What is the background to the project? What is the business problem you're trying to overcome? What are your objectives for the project? What are you going to deliver? What are critical to the success of the project and how are you going to approach it? All of this information forces people to consider why we're undertaking the project. The final tab, Parameters, tells us the boundaries within the project. What are the constraints, the dependencies, what's in scope, what's excluded from scope, and there's a facility to add some notes. So having put all this information together, you have a very comprehensive view of what the project is all about. Now we can produce a report from all this by clicking on the report button. That report is almost like a mini project charter and in fact many organisations use this as a way of tracking the projects that are in the queue waiting to be started. It helps them get a snapshot view of what the project is all about and gives them some guidance as to how to set priorities for projects. So now we can close the report and go back to the project details screen. As you've seen, we can take a minimalist or a complete view of the project. We can enter just the project name or we can enter full details and come up with a project charter. Once we've completed entering the project, that project will appear on the home screen and we can use that to add all sorts of other information budgets, expenditures, issues, risks, action items, changes, all of those are available to us.